Hi everyone, Chris the Bull here from Esperlux, coming to you from rainy Geneva right here in Old Town. We're going to be seeing some amazing watches, talking about GPHG and only watch and what is slowly becoming the unofficial watch collector week in Geneva. So let's visit some friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. We are at Hotel La Reserve in Geneva. We are uh, excited to have Paul Boutros with us today, head of Watches Americas uh, with Philips Auction, Philips Auction House. Exactly. And to look at some absolutely incredible pieces that we've, uh, that we've selected, that Paul has selected uh, to showcase for us here as Perlux. And uh, the auction starts on Friday. Yes, uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, pleasure to have you here. Great to see you on this side of the world. Uh, our Geneva Watch Auction 14 sale will take place on Friday, November 5th, and Sunday, November 7th, in two sessions. Okay, got it. Awesome. Super excited. Let's just get to it because <laughs> I, I'm staring at these pieces and I'm, you know, I'm drooling over here. Um, maybe we start with the probably two of the most talked about watches maybe in the last 10 years uh, of uh, uh, of auctions <laughs> yeah we are very fortunate to have the first five Jorn models ever produced uh, they're known as the FP Jorn subscription set all of them are serial number one sold to uh, FP Jorn's longest time customer patron and friend uh, when Jorn founded his brand, uh, the very first model that he introduced was the Tourbillon uh, with Remontoire. And here you're holding the very first one he ever sold, and it was to this great friend of his. With serial number one, this is how he launched his brand. And for the very first 20 uh, of this model, he offered them to close friends and family uh, as a subscription uh, p uh, type of model that Abraham Louis Brier used to raise funds mm -hmm. to build his company. Uh, when that patron or any one of those 20 original owners purchased one, they had the ability to get his second model, the Resonance, also serial number one. And here we have the second model, also sold to the same person. We're not showing the subsequent three models, always serial number one. Here are the probably two most famous uh, Jorn watches um, ever. Uh, the Tourbillon, his first model, the first uh, Tourbillon equipped wristwatch ever to feature a remontoire. And then his seminal work, in my humble opinion, the Resonance, um, a two escapement precision chronometer with basically two independent movements combined into one and uh, through vibrations that are carried for, uh, by the, the movement, they keep identical time because of the, the physical theory of a phenomenon of resonance, and that improves the overall accuracy. And this is not wound right now, so just, uh, just a heads up, we didn't wind this so that... Yeah, pa power reserve is at its lowest point, That's so right. it hasn't been wound. Uh, what's special about this particular one, not only is it serial number one, but it's got a two-tone case, mm. one of only five ever made with a pink gold and platinum case. Very early Jorn models, the dials as he was learning the craft, feature this amazing mirrored finish and yeah. texture with a protective lacquer that, that aged and tarnished. Yeah. And these watches have that the original. Patina, right? Yes, a, and they, those dials were never replaced. Hmm. And today's collectors fully appreciate the total originality of Absolutely. these two because they've got this wonderful patina that uh, makes them sort of magical yeah. in their appearance. That two-tone is outstanding too. Uh, it's, it's just such a beautiful combination with the dial. Uh, that uh, that they incorporated for the resonance, stunning. Yeah, and, and you can see the subdials on this one are super silvery, and they would yeah. become more white as time went by. Uh, and one of the standout features of the the first twenty Tourbillon models, and it's the only watch with this feature, is the se the serial number. It's on the dial here, and That's it right. says one of twenty, matched by the number one in this very tiny engraved script uh, right here on the case back. So uh, stunning, stunning two pieces out of the first five pieces 
uh, the, the set of five number ones. Yes, and they will be on offer on Sunday, uh, right. starting with lot number 138. And the Tourbillon has an estimate of 300,000 to 600,000 uh, 600, Swiss francs, whereas the Resonance is estimated at 200,000 to 400,000 Swiss francs. I think. I think they'll do a little bit better than that. <laughs> Just based, based on, based on uh, the Jorn track record over the last few years. But beautiful. Absolutely stunning. I mean, the 38 millimeter case uh, yes. is, 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 is a, there's definitely a charm to it. Uh, yeah, now, and now discontinued. He, he no longer really produces anything with a 38 millimeter case. Yeah. And uh, of course, they're from, I mean, the brand really started with this particular watch. It is the very first commercial transaction yeah. he made under the FP Journe brand. Sure, yeah, that's right. That's what kickstarted it all. So let's look at something else here that's, uh, that's catching my eye. And we are looking at why don't, why don't you uh, why don't you do the, do the honors of introducing yeah, this piece? Yeah, so as I lifted it, I, I promise you, my heart just started <laughs> to beat really fast. Uh, one of the most important watches of the 20th century. This is the world's first Grand A Petit Sonnery wristwatch with minute repeater ever made by any brand. Uh, Grand A Petit Sonnery pocket watches and clocks uh, existed for, for for a long time. Uh, but no one had incorporated that type of a complicated mechanism into a wristwatch until Philippe Dufour did it. Uh, this watch dates to 1992. He created a series of five pocket watches with that Grand Petit Sonnery complication. He produced them from Audemars Piguet uh, and made one additional pocket watch with his, his own name, Philippe Dufour, signed Philippe Dufour. That was made in, I believe, 1989. Unique piece. The only pocket watch with his name on it. Hmm. Uh, and then he miniaturized it and he created the, the wristwatch. The pocket watch is also being offered, serial number one. We have um, the wristwatch, which is also serial number one with an enamel dial yeah, and I was say, let's, let's, the magic uh, let's of the, magic the, the complicated movement, the absolutely exquisite uh, hand finishing by Dufour himself. Uh, this watch is as good as it gets. Uh, everything about it, the aesthetic, the case dim dimensions, the size, the complications, the finishing, uh, it is um, really the apex of independent watchmaking. Yeah, I mean, if you talk about artisanal watchmaking at its very best, Philippe Dufour pioneered uh, that path. Yeah. To, uh, to, to, for a lot of uh, the independent watchmakers that you know we know today uh, have Philippe Dufour to thank for that. D definitely. Um, Outstanding. Uh, it's uh, lot number 14 in the sale, uh, so it'll be offered in the first day this coming Friday. Um, and uh, it's just, uh, I can't wait to see how the market, you know, uh, <laughs> prices it. But uh, for me, it's just fabulous. Amazing. It's uh, it's a little bit surreal to to hold some of these pieces, um, you know, that have so much meaning and history to uh, to the independent watchmaking movement. I mean, this is for, for, for me personally. This uh, it's what I love. It's what I um, it's my passion and my hobby. So this is incredible, truly. Um, mm, yeah, I mean, I, I know you for quite some time, Chris, and. Uh, anyone who, who discovers independent watches like you just falls head over heels yeah. for them because of the artisanal craftsmanship, sort of the uniqueness of every piece because yeah. they're produced by individuals, individual artisans. It's do, um, doing a lot more with less. Right? Yeah. That's, that's how I've always, um, I, I've always placed it, and it's just a, an entirely different approach to watchmaking. Uh, it's watchmaking art, right? I totally and, agree. And speaking of watchmaking art, uh, that we see a Roger Smith here. Yeah, we have uh, also in the Geneva auction a fabulous Roger Smith Series 2 in 18 karat pink gold, uh, 40 millimeter case, one of only five ever made with a really well crafted hand engraved dial uh, with a hand engraved crown and hand engraved uh, bridges uh, on the movement. Standard. Uh, this is the 19th Series 2 ever made. 
So um, Roger Smith, of course, was uh, the only apprentice to George Daniels, sort of the father, I think, of independent watchmakers of the 20th century. Yeah. Uh, Daniels basically just continued where, where uh, Roger Smith continued where, where Daniels had left off. Uh, and this movement features the Daniels coaxial uh, escapement. Uh, so built for precision timekeeping, uh, doesn't need lubrication in the escapement. It's yeah. natural escapement. Uh, actually, it's it's kind of similar, yeah. but uh, it, Daniels' own design. With the coaxial, sorry, yeah. yes, yes, that's yeah. right, coaxial. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, yeah, the, the, the size, the proportions, the aesthetic, again, really are, are fantastic. Stunning. I mean, this is, again, uh, again, what, you know, Roger Smith is doing, you know, carrying on the legacy of George Daniels. And, uh, you know, th there's a, there's almost like a mysticism to it. You know, you have to, you, when you commission a piece, you know, you go to Isle of Man and then, you know, the, the, you, <laughs> you get take the delivery. whole experience and you take delivery of it, right? It's, yeah, uh, there, there are stories where he cooks you lunch or cooks you, cooks you yeah. dinner as you, as you get to know him, him and his wife. Um, yeah, very charming, and uh, that whole experience, that whole process of ordering a piece, uh, and unfortunately he stopped taking orders, I think, in June of this year, That's because right, yeah. his, his order book is really full. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, when you look at the details of all of these watches, but uh, you see hand work throughout. The, the hands are completely handmade with these beautiful arrow-shaped tips. Uh, there's a power reserve indicator here, uh, you know, at the at the 11 o'clock marker. The dial is sunk in with all sorts of different guilloche patterns. Um, fantastic. The the estimate is 120,000 to 240,000 Swiss francs, and it's going to be offered the first day of the auction this Friday. Awesome. Uh, lastly, uh, uh, one of these things is not like the other. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Dubitune DB28. Uh, in the mirror polished titanium, Dubitune's signature mirror polished titanium. Uh, of course, Dubitune, uh, you know, the, with the watchmaker, uh, master watchmaker, Denis Flejolet, um, as, uh, as its uh, head watchmaker uh, and, and co founder. And uh, this here, I believe, is an example from 2015, but is the same model. Uh, that uh, Dubitune had released in 2010, I believe, and won the GPHG award for it in 2011. Exactly. Uh, and that was the first time that Dubitune had introduced the floating lugs uh, in, in the wristwatch and, and immediately became kind of the flagship model uh, of the brand and with an aesthetic that is, um, you know, so much of what we know about Dubitune and recognize with Dubitune today, uh, that sort of uh, space age. Uh, theme to it, um, a, a beautiful piece, uh, and totally. then of course you have the, uh, you know the the with the movement the parachute shock absorbing um, uh, 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 system that's in there. Uh, you have uh, the the moon phase at the six o'clock position, and and just to show you guys, if you don't know and you haven't seen it before, these beautiful articulated spring loaded lugs. That will flex on your wrist and I'll put it on. So So as you see, the lugs are full down. I am unbelievably light to wear. I've always said the between titanium pieces are some of the most comfortable watches I've ever put on in my life. Um, yeah. When is this piece being offered? This will be offered on day one. I think it's lot number 19. The estimate is 25,000 to 45,000. And uh, yeah, you summarized the watch so so well. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, sorry, Chris. I, I got, ex I got yeah, excited. <laughs> no, it's, it's so much to be excited about. The aesthetic is, is really, uh, as you said, space age, uh, space travel, I think, inspired. Uh, ruthenium plated movement with a mix of, of polished and, and Cote de Genève surfaces. Um, I think Dimithun, the quality of the watchmaking is sort of still not well known. But yeah. if people realized how great the watchmaking is, yeah. um, it, 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 that's the fun and beauty of independence is you don't know how good they are uh, and, until you live with them yeah. and, and, and handle them for quite some time. 
and the, the watchmaking is, is truly, truly excellent. And for, uh, for, the, and for those of you that don't know, I mean, this, the story goes, I mean, Denis Flageolet was part of that uh, three-headed uh, monster, I call it, over at uh, Frère Cartier when uh, he was working with Jorn and Vianney Halter uh, on, I believe, the Cartier Privé pieces. Yes, um, the T THA, I think, was, was, that's, was the that, company. That's right. They were movement complication specialists, that's and right. uh, that trio created the uh, monopoussoir movement that's used in the Cartier Tortue Monopoussoir by the CPCP, part of the CPCP collection. And one of the first the between chronographs, uh, I believe it was the same monopoussoir chronograph as well. Yeah, yeah um, just <laughs> Flagellet is, is super skilled. Um, and, you know, the, just the design of the movement, it's so symmetrical, it's so well done and done by him. Uh, you know, he has the capability and the skill to make that's, the dials. That's what's incredible. I mean, he, he makes a, the hands. Yeah, he's he makes, a wizard. He's a wizard. He does it all. Metallurgy, metallurgy watchmaking, you know, it's a very diverse uh, set of skills in, in creating watches. Um, you know, if you've seen some of the blued pieces, I mean, he's doing all of that. He's, he's always experimenting with different treatments and thermal treatments and heat treatments to to give, you know, on different metals. I mean, the yeah. meteorite stuff that they've done recently is you know, also just you know, outstanding. Uh, and, and the Bitsun is having a resurgence. Uh, obviously, they've been in the news recently, uh, you know, um, uh, more so than, you know, than ever in the last, in the last few years. Um, but uh, I think the future is bright for the brand. Yeah, yeah, def definitely. Uh, the fun of, of independence, you see it all here. And there's, the diversity. <laughs> yes, yeah. there, there's something for, for everyone, all sorts of different tastes and styles and sensibilities. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, we welcome people, I'm, I'm so happy you came, to come to here. our auction exhibitions where you can try on and see all these different, different pieces with no pressure to buy. Yeah, they just come for the experience. Uh, I mean, come look at the watches, come for the experience. If you know if you're interested in purchasing it, I mean, you guys are the best curators out there. Thank um, you, Chris. You know, of, of of everything, not just independence, but um, and the work that you've done over the last few years speaks for itself. So, well, uh, we appreciate those kind words. <laughs> congratulations again. The auctions are this Friday and Sunday. Friday starting at uh, two p.m. Central Europe time. Which beware this weekend, uh, the United States turns back its clock. That's right. Europe turned back its clock last weekend, right. so 2 p.m. starting time, Geneva on Friday, which is um, 7 a.m., I think. Oh, no, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Eastern time, 6 a.m. Pacific time. And then on Sunday, it's a 2 p.m. Central Europe start time. However, that is going to be 8 a.m. Eastern right. time and 5 a.m. Pacific time. That's right. Yep. Thanks again, Paul. Thank you so much, really Chris. Appreciate really it. great to see Always you. Great to have you. Thanks, Thank you. Uh, thanks for making the time for us and enjoy the auction, guys. This is going to be fun and exciting.